Hey guys, I am so excited. Uh, in this video, we're going to be making the uh, workbook for the Everlasting uh, printables. Um, but this is the first video I'm shooting, so I'm so excited. I haven't, uh, I haven't, this is the first one. This is literally the first one I'm shooting. You won't see it first. So the first one you'll see will be the introduction um, to the templates. And then the second one will probably be how you use them. But uh, or to start to show you how to use them. <laughs> so this one will probably come a few videos down the road, but um, I'm super excited. It's a lot of work goes into these things, and when I start filming, it's like, yay! <laughs> so, anyway, so this is the one I'm going to be making in the video today, but I wanted to kind of go down memory lane for a minute and show you all the different other workbooks that I've made. Um, and talk about them a little bit, and then um, then I'll show you how to make this one. So if you want to skip all that, uh, maybe I'll put a timestamp below in the description box so you can just skip to making this one. But I thought it would be fun to look at my uh, other workbooks that I've made. So let me grab them, and I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here they are. Look, I'm going to um, lift them up so you can see the big pile I got here. Okay, so I'm going to scoot them all over, and we'll just talk about one at a time. I've only made videos with two of these workbooks besides the one you're watching today, so I wanted to make sure I pointed that out. This was my first one, the first workbook I ever made. I didn't make this cover um, on, on video, um, but I just basically, you know, just did some decoupaging and uh, used my, my doodle flowers, and if I remember, I'll put a link to that below, but I will definitely put a link to this workbook because I made this one um, on film, and I put it on YouTube. And so I will link that below, and I will also link the printable below if you're interested. So this one I did, I did kind of like a mixed media cover, and these were like, these were like chipboard letters or something um, that I added actually after the fact. So when I made it in the video, this is where it started. And so this is just a piece of transparency, no big deal. And then my notes and table of contents. And see, this one has tabs, but I did this one differently. Um... So I did print out the the um, the guide, the instruction part, and I put it in here, right? That's what all the green tabs are for. All that's there, and then um, I even provided the tabs uh, back then. I didn't do, haven't done that in the past couple ones because you know people can get them tab punches pretty easy. Um, so then here's where the actual templates start. So here is like the first page, it's called the bottom page, and I did the same thing. I wrote all the information on here that I needed to know. Um, and for whatever reason, I'm not even sure, but this is how I did it. So, um, oh, and then I was showing you that it, you know, printed in black, you know, that was before I made the other book. <laughs> Anyways, and so here's the next page again, wrote the information, wrote the information. These ones, these ones are meant to print directly onto pattern paper. Um, and then I put little plastic uh, sleeves in this one to hold anything that I have left over. So these, these are literally from when I made the videos, um, just transparencies and stuff. So these were page, these pages, right? This page right here. So that's, what I, that's how I tackled that problem when I had leftover pieces from printing something out. Um, like here is another piece. I made this um, sheet, you know, used my fuse tool and divided it out. Kind of a bit of a pain in the tush, to be quite honest on that. I really like the other method better, um, uh, just having the page protector in the book. So not everyone has a, has a, sh a sh oh shoot, <laughs> has a sleeve uh, to hold the extra bits. So that's how I did this workbook and it was fine. This is the one I showed you when the giveaway videos and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it was fine. I'm pretty sure I did the giveaway videos back then. I might not have. I might have released them all at one time. I don't remember. This was a long time ago. But this is the easiest one to put together. If you're new, um, this is definitely one to look at. So this was my very first workbook, and it's pretty. Um, but, you know, I've evolved a little bit from there. So let's go to the next one. So then this is the second one I made. I did not make a video on this one because it's basically... I think. I haven't flipped through it in a while, but it's basically the same as this one. So I didn't make a video, so I just kind of referenced it. But this one is the ultimate DIY. I don't even have a title page. Now, isn't that sad? I don't even have a title page that says the ultimate on there. So um, 
yeah, there's just, I don't know, this is kind of random. That's just there. <laughs> so this one, I use uh, plastic sleeves for every page, but for whatever reason, I printed off onto regular copy paper, the template, and then I taped it down to the plastic sleeve um, instead of putting it in the plastic sleeve. So that was kind of a, that was, that was a learning curve right there. Cause it, duh, why didn't you just stick it into the plastic sleeve? So anyway, <laughs> so that's what I did. And it's, and sometimes I would make a template and I'd stick it to the back side. So each page looks like has its own, um, sleeve. Look, there's a leftover piece. It's page number two. It's already got tape on it and everything. Wow, this takes me back. This was, this was well over a year ago. I don't remember exactly. Um, but I will link this printable in the description box below as well. This is the ultimate DIY. So yeah, so it looks like every page has its own uh, page protector. So, and then every once in a while you'll see a little baggy when they're small pieces. So, you know, why not? That works. Um, yeah, see here, so there's where, you know, I've traceable templates, I got them stuck. Let's see. Oh, see, they still come unstuck off there, so that's good. And there's uh, for the extra printed off pieces. And there's some more glassine bags. So, this one worked. Like, look. This one did its job. There's extra pieces that were printed off. I don't know why those pieces are in there, but hey. Oh, because they were, they were cut down from one of these pieces, so... This paper was so pretty. It's a Graphic 45 paper. I don't remember. Secret Garden. Yes, I do. Um, whoa. Okay. So anyway, so basically that's what this one is. I didn't, did I print off the, no. The guide for this is not in this book. So this is strictly just the workbook. So this one has a lot of parts and pieces to it. This one ended up being thick. But I think if I would have done two pages per plastic sleeve, it wouldn't have been this thick. So again, another learning curve but it worked it did its job it kept me organized and that's kind of the whole point of these workbooks right so there's the ultimate and this is just i think this is just wrapping paper i just wrapped uh, some postal board and wrapping paper not not real exciting but just to give it a little something instead of i don't know why i didn't do a title sheet and then this is the next one i made this is the paper dream and i did make a video on this i think there's two videos on how i made this this one, oh, those first two, I did the binding myself with my bind at all. See? Um, but this one I took to Staples, and they did the spiral bound. So I did do videos on this one. Um, this one's different because I did, I made me a title sheet. Um, that's, so this is when I started actually providing the title sheets for the printables, too. So it's like a process. You know, you learn every time. You learn something new every time. So these are page protectors, and then I, I had to add the black strip for staples to be able to poke through. It wouldn't poke through just the plastic, so I had to add, you know, the, the cardstock there. But again, I've already filmed this, so you can just go watch that video. I'll link it below. So this one, it's front and back, which is smarter. Um, but this one, the way this one was designed, it has two size mats. So it has an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch size mat. So they're both stuck here, um, just like that. And they're stuck on top of each other. And, oh, that one's really stuck. So this one, again, I provided the sheet that you could print off um, your mats onto. I just think it looks pretty. It looks pretty in your workbook. And I wrote all my information down. Um, and see, there's extra pieces from when I made things. And there's extra pieces in there. So these have the tabs. These were provided in the template for this one. Um, but I don't know if you remember, but the tabs kept coming off, so I had to go back and use score tape. So there's still, some of them are still coming off because I didn't go do all of them. I just did the ones that were loose. <laughs> so I need to go back and fix them, really. But, um, but anyway, so yeah, I really liked this one. This one worked out really nice. Um, it's turned smooth. It's very organized. Oh, but this one, again, it's kind of a wasted space. So I've got all these pages here that are just mats. So let me see. So that many pages are just mats. So that's just wasted material, wasted time, wasted thickness, because um, there's nothing in there, right? So I didn't need to do those. That's why I change. I'm gonna change it up for. That's why I. <laughs> that's why I'm changing it up for this workbook um, that I'm getting ready to do. And so here's, you know, and then there's the um, 
the covers, the different covers. Remember all the covers were in the back. You don't, I don't know if you remember or not. I don't know if you have it. <laughs> but um, so all that's back here, right? Everything. And then I think there's even more mats. Yeah, there's more mats back here. Oh, look at There's a piece. Oh, there's a mat right there. But I just kind of feel like um, some of the tabs fell off too. Look. Oh, and this one actually came with um, lines. So, and there's the extra tabs that I had. Um, so yeah, so this one, oh, and this one has a closure, which I liked it because it got thicker. So if my, if the one I'm going to make today gets thicker, I'll add a closure, but I don't think I'm going to. Um, I've already made it, but I'm, <laughs> anyway, I've already made it. I've already filmed it. So, so anyway, so this one was really nice. This one was, this one really kept me really good and organized. There was a lot of parts and pieces. I really liked this one. I did like this. Um, I think it's a little big, but, um, I did like it. I like this a lot. So there's videos for this. And then the latest one I did was my keepsake boxes, right? Oh, look, the thingy's coming un... Whoops, wrong way. They're coming untwirled. So, um, I did not film this because I made it the same way I made the Paper Dream. Um, this one doesn't have a closure on it because it's kind of thin. It doesn't really need it. But I made my cover sheet. The cover sheet came with it. Um, but this one has traceable templates in it. So there, I did put tabs on it to show where the box and the album were. But, um, but anyway, and here's the mats. You know, same way, same exact way. This, I mean, it just really, really, really keeps you organized. So these are meant to be printed off directly onto your pattern paper. See, there's uh, from the uh, Christmas. What is that from? Yeah, the Christmas album that I made. Duh. <laughs> um, and I really liked it. And for this one, I had made one for each size. So I had a large, a medium, and a small. And they were all made the same, and they were all made the same as the paper dream. And then I literally just got done filming the everlasting one. So I think you guys are going to really, really like it. Um, I did it differently. I didn't. There's not a page for every page. So that cut down on the bulk. This is both the Everlasting and the Mini Everlasting, so they're both in here. Um, they're all available separately, like you can get the bundle and then you can get the Everlasting on its own and the Mini on its own, so remember that. But this one, I did the coils myself and I did the binding myself with the bind it all. I use laminating sheets. Um, there's two pages per page, you know, two, you know, page two and page three. Um, but none of the pages for the mats are in here. Okay, so what I did to remedy that, um, if I had any mats that I didn't use, if I printed them off and didn't use them or whatever, I put a pouch in the back. Um, I can just put them in there. So, so anyway, so I'm so far, I love the thought of the, this one being less bulk, um, same organization. So we'll see. So you let me know. Let me know in the comments below which one you like the best. Um, you know, which system you think you might like the best or if you have any other ideas. So yeah, look at all of them. Good grief. Again, all my links will be below. Let's get on to making our new one, right? Hey guys, I am super excited. Um, in this video, we're going to be making the workbook for the everlasting, um, printable templates, the, um, original size and then the mini. Um, I just do it as a bundle because I'm going to be using them hand in hand eventually. So um, this is the first video I'm filming. So I'm so excited. I am, I'm dancing over here. <laughs> this of course is not going to be the first video you see, but um, I have to make the video first because I have to make my workbook first. We're going to be making the workbook. I'm not going to do the entire thing with you, but I have kept pieces out so that I can show you what I did to make it. Um, if you hear something weird in the background, I've got my uh, laminating machine warming up and we're going to be using a laminator this time around. What I usually suggest that you do, the first thing when you get, when you get your printable after you um, purchase it and download it to your computer, you need to save it um, on your computer and if you um, forget to do that or you can't find your files anymore, you can always go to your purchase receipt and you can download your files again. So they're always there as long as you have your account. Um, I get that question quite a bit. So 
just remember that if you can't find your files, they're always going to be there at your, uh, in your account and in your purchase receipt. And also you don't have to wait for an email from Etsy once you purchase. Uh, you don't, you do not have to wait to go download your files. Um, you can usually within minutes, you know, go look in your purchases and there your receipt will be and your files will be there available. So that's another thing too. I get asked about quite a bit, but anyway, so what I suggest you do is whichever you buy, of course, I'm doing both because I'm going to be demonstrating both over the coming videos, um, is print out your, uh, guide. Okay. And you don't have to, uh, you really don't have to print it out. Let me get to the guide. <laughs> You don't have to print out your guide. You can copy your information down straight from your computer computer screen. So um, I print it out because I like to have quick reference when I'm working, just in case I forgot something. Well, you know, I've, do, I've done a lot of printables, so you know, I do forget stuff on occasion. <laughs> so I print it out and I bind it in a book. This time I used my bind at all. Uh, previous ones I have taken them to like Staples and they do it no problem, and it's usually pretty cheap. So, uh, but this time I used my bind at all. And so you print it out and all the information you need to know is on here. So like, for example, this is the main base part one option B and it says, you know, the mat is on page 26 and the inserts are on page six and seven. And it gives you, you know, a little bit of what you can do with it. Not all of them give you extra bits of information, but they all will tell you where their mat is, um, if they have one and they will tell you where the insert is, if it has one and if it has a part one or part two. Since this one's part one, part two is on the next page, which is on page five. You know, you'll have all that information close to hand, okay? And so then what I do is um, I print out for this book, because this is what I show you throughout the whole series when I do my giveaway drawings. Um, I have them all printed here so I can re reference quickly um, the different ones, but you don't have to do it this way. What I did, what I did for this um, workbook, let me grab what I've already got done. Okay, I've got most of it done, but I wanted to show you um, what I did. And then I'm gonna demonstrate what I did. Um, I did use a laminator. You know, I laminated all the pages. So I went ahead um, and got most of it finished. So what I did was I printed it off in script. Isn't that pretty? You don't have to print it off in script. I just thought that'd be uh, more attractive because I'll be showing it to you. Um, and then I wrote all that information that's in the guidebook on here so that I have also another quick reference when I am working. It just makes your work go a lot, you know, makes the, the project go a lot faster. And then um, in your guide, you get a full page of the color. So um, for the, for the uh, Everlasting, you get the blue, and for the Mini Everlasting, you get the purple. I print that out onto cardstock. I used 110 pound cardstock just so you know. And then I printed the mat for this page on top of it. I'll get to, I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. And then I also put that same information on here, mat for the main base, option B page on page four and five. Okay, here is the page number two, uh, which is the main base part one, option A. So what I'm gonna do, and this is just on regular paper. Um, it's it's um, not copy paper, I don't know. I have a thing about the way paper feels. So anyway, it doesn't matter. It's just regular paper. So what I'm going to write on here is main base. Uh, let's see. Part one. Option A. Because that's what it says right here main base part one option a and then it says the mat is on page 25 so i'm going to write that on here and then it says the inserts on page six and seven okay so then i've also got page number three here which is part two so it says main base part two option a Matt's on page 25, insert page six and seven. So you wanna go through and write that on all of your pages. These are all the main bases, main base pages that I'm talking about. So at one point you get to where they're just mats. And the mats on this one uh, start on page 25, okay? So you can then, um, you can stop at page 24 and 
print the mats out differently, okay? Now, the mats can be printed directly onto your uh, pattern paper or you can use them as traceable templates. They were designed to be traceable templates, but they're also, you can print them out, you know, directly onto your pattern paper. So, sorry I'm a little out of breath, I just had to go into the door. <laughs> um, so what I did for that, like I said, is I printed off the blue sheet that came with your, um, where's it at? that comes with your guide. I printed that off onto 110 pound cardstock. And then I printed ooh, page 25, which is this one right here. And that's the mat for page two and three. I printed that on top of the blue paper. Okay. So this way I can keep them separate. So when I'm working and I've got, if I'm using both sets of templates, I know which one goes with which, you know, I don't have to do a whole lot of searching. So anyway, so with this one, you want to write on here, uh, let's see, mat for main base, option A, and that is on page, what did I say, two and three? And then I'm going to write the page number down here at the bottom. I think that's all I wrote on them. Let me double check just to be sure. And if you really wanted to, you could write on here where the inserts are. Um, I didn't do that on the, all the other ones, so I'm not going to do it on this one. So, but anyway, so then that's all you need to do, right? So then we need to um, cut this one out and we need to laminate these. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to wait to, nice. I'm going to wait to cut this out until after I get all my laminating done. So another thing I did, let me move this out of the way. Um, on my other workbooks, um, I had pages for the mats, like if there was a page in the workbook for the mats as well. But for this one, I decided not to do that. I figured it would be wasteful. So instead of having that, um, you know, page for all of the mat templates, we're getting there and there's the binding. I made a laminated sleeve that's open. That's just a pocket so that I could store stuff like, let me find something so you can see it. Well, these aren't mats, but this was when I was making my, my mock-ups, my prototypes. But if you have, uh, if you print them out onto pattern paper and you have extra mats, you can store them in there and keep them there versus, um, you know, having them in individual uh, pages. It would just, if each one of these matte pages had a laminated page, it would just make the book a lot thicker. So I thought this was a good solution. So I'm going to tell you how I did that as well. Okay, so this is um, glassine paper. It's just regular plain glassine paper. And I will link below um, anything that I purchased where I, or, uh, yeah, where I purchased it uh, in case you're interested in buying some. I'd actually bought some of this to and I still haven't done it yet because I wanted to demonstrate the glassing bag um, tool. I still haven't done it yet, but I decided I better buy the glassine stuff to give it a fair shake. But I, <laughs> I haven't even tried it yet with the glassine. But anyway, so you're going to need two sheets. And I cut mine down to 8.5 by 11 because they come at 12 by 12 sheets. So we're going to run this through the laminator as well. So um, let me just, oh, let me show you what laminating sheets I'm going to use as well. This is what I ended up using. Um, first though, let me tell you, I had actually had this. This is Scotch self-laminating uh, pouches, but um, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. I was, I was trying to do a different, I still need a place to put stuff. So this didn't work out, but that doesn't mean it won't work out for you guys. I just feel like I need pockets. So um, I tried using this and it didn't work. So I was at Staples and they're having their back to school sale. So this is what I ended up buying. This is actually cheaper than Staples, uh, Staples brand was. This is Fellows. Um, it's 120 sheets. I, I didn't need that many, but I thought I might screw up or something. <laughs> so um, this is three mil thickness and um, I barely have even dug into it. I mean, it doesn't, I'll have to count at some point to see how many sheets I actually ended up using. But this is, you need this, to, uh, a laminator. You don't need this laminator, but you need a laminator to use this one. So I'm gonna do one, two, three sheets. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab three laminating pouches here. 
Now remember, you can do your workbook any way you want to. Um, you can do it in any of the way, the previous ways I've done it. You can do it your own way. You don't even have to make one if you don't want to. You can just put them all in a sleeve, you know, a job ticket sleeve or something. You do not have to do it this way. I just find it, I end up making so many things and so many videos. I find this to be the best, easiest, um, most organized way to do it. And I'm not going to lie, it will take you some time. So, you know... Step one, print your guidebook out if you want to. Step two, print um, all of your main bases onto pattern paper, or not pattern paper, <laughs> onto plain old copy paper. Um, step three, write down what each one is. You see what I'm saying? So you just do step by step by step, and it does take some time, but in, in my opinion, it is well worth it. Okay. So, before I get the laminating machine over here, I thought I'd go ahead and get the pouches ready. So this time, instead of each page having its own sleeve, I'm gonna do back to back. So, this page is gonna have page two in the front and page three in the back. So the way um, I'm gonna put this in here is I'm gonna stick the bottom of the two pages. I'm gonna try to, I hope there's not too much of a glare, but I can't really, help that. Um, I'm going to leave um, an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a little more, a little less, um, at the bottom and on one side and then, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I scooted over quite a bit on that side because that's where we're going to punch our holes. So um, that one's ready. And then for this, why I have this out is this is going to be my back, the back of the book. Um, I just feel like, you know, it just needs something back there, you know. So, um, like in my other books, I just have like a, a poster board or something, which is fine too. So I'm going to scoot it over the other way because the binding is going to, I want this to be on the back side just so I, I know what it is no matter which way it's facing. Not that I wouldn't know what it is because it's so pretty. So I got that one ready. And then for this one... These are stronger than they look. The, the ones that are self-laminating, they're really thick. The ones that you don't need to use heat with, that surprised me, actually. Okay, so then I'm just going to take those two sheets and I'm going to slide them in there just like, just like the other pages. And I'm going to try to keep them. If they, die, if they get a little off, that's okay. And this one is for the mini. So I've already got the one for the Everlasting. This is for the mini Everlasting. All right, so let me go grab the machine. Okay, there, I did not purchase this machine. <laughs> My husband brought it home from work. It's a Scotch TL901. I have no idea how much it costs. It's broken. It, it, you have to, this lever here, it's, I don't know. Anyway, so he brought it home so that I could try this technique to see if I wanted to do it. So it's actually coming handy. So I didn't even have to buy anything. So I think... Laminators are pretty cheap. I'm not super sure, but the, the laminating sheets, I got those on sale. They were like $22 for the 120 pouches. So, and I'm sure you can find them cheaper than that as well. But anyway, um, so this is all hot and I've got it set to three milliliter. There's a three milliliter and a five milliliter plus. And now that I think about it, I bet you I could have used my mink machine, but, um, since, oh, it says it's not ready. Why isn't it ready? It should be ready. Well, the light was on. I guess I need to wait for it to come back on now. So it doesn't take very much time at all. And apparently there's another piece. Do I, am I sending it? No. That he left in the truck. So, okay. So it's not, there we go. So I just need to pull this button down. And it'll just slide right on through. Takes no time at all. I actually had him helping me last night laminate all the other sheets because you had to hold the button down. <laughs> so I filled the sleeve and then I stuck it in there and he held the button down and it was, it was, it actually took no time at all. It took us about 10 minutes, I think. Maybe if that, to do the whole shebang that we've already done. This is so cool. I've never had a laminator before, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. It's pretty neat. 
See, it doesn't even say it's ready, but heck, that could have burnt out by now. I don't know. Okay, so look at there. Nice and laminate. So this is going to be the back of my book. So I'm going to set that aside. And then let's send this page through. <laughs> this does kind of suck, but hey. It was free, so free can't suck. I'll probably fast forward this because how exciting is this? <laughs> it's like it's like watching paint dry or water boil or something. <laughs> Maybe I'll do the silly voice. That's always cute. <laughs> okay, sweet. So there's page two. On the back side is page three. Okay, so I got that. And then the glassine bag one, or the glassine paper, it does go through kind of funny. Um, I don't know if you noticed when I was showing you the one I'd already made. It's kind of weird looking, but I don't, I don't know why. I'm just assuming that it has something to do with, I might even put that in there crooked. I hope it doesn't hurt anything. The glassine part, you know. I can't believe I put that in crooked. Out of all the ones I've sent through there, that's the first crooked one I've done. <laughs> Doesn't look like it's too bad. Oh, this one didn't do as bad as the first one I did. Huh. Look at there. That one didn't do near as bad. All right, so let me turn this off and move it out of the way. Now, this is the cover and I'm almost positive I trimmed this down a little bit, but I don't remember. Or this is not the cover, that's the back side. Oh, I did. Let me get my paper trimmer. So I didn't want the covers to be too ginormous compared to the rest of it. Uh, but I do want the width to be what it is. So I'm just going to trim this down a little bit. I forget what I had it on. Let me grab another one. Let's see. Oh, okay. So I did trim this down to where it is almost 11 or right at 11. This is a Fiskars Rotary um, Precision Paper Trimmer. My favorite. I love this thing. I think I say that every time. Oh no, this was not trimmed down to 11. What is this trimmed down to? 11 and a quarter. Oops. It's a good thing it's just going on the back side, huh? So let's scoot that down to 11 and a quarter. Oops. So that's going to be on the back. And then for all of the pages, all of the uh, main base pages, what I did was I stuck it in my paper trimmer. Remember now I kind of made sure that all the bottoms and the sides were pretty darn close to the same. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it down to 11. I'm going to line up the edge of the um, laminate page to the 11 inch mark and I'm going to trim it. And what that's going to do, since I did two sheets, that's going to give me a pocket. So now I can stick stuff in there, like if um, I printed off too many of these or if I printed off um, too many of these, I can just stick it in there. And so I have it right there. Okay, so and I'm going to do the same thing to this. I'm going to trim it down to 11 and that will give me my pocket. No big deal. So there's going to be my pocket for my, um, for my mats and things that... I have extra of if I end up with extra. All right, now I can move this. Back. All right. So, oh look, this was a misprint, and look, my printer's printing funky. I don't know what happened there, but um, I think either one of two things: either I damaged my blue cartridge when I put it in. I don't even remember when I did that, or I'm running out of it. One of the two. So, um, I don't know. Okay, so let's punch my hole. So, like I said. I didn't use my binds at all this time. I used my binds at all. And oh, you know what I didn't grab? 
I'll have to grab it in a minute. So this is a Zutter bind it all. I'll link it below. Um, and what I did is I took a full sheet of eight and a half by 11. I folded it in half and I marked the middle. And then I did a pre-punch so that I could see exactly where I was gonna start and stop. Because on the Zutter, there is arrows there, that's the center. So that's where you're supposed to line up your center. So it's kind of like a template. So then what I do is I can go ahead, actually, actually I can go ahead and do all three of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do them. Oh no, I'm not here. And I'll wait for the back cover. <laughs> so I'm just putting them together. The ends, the ends are matching. Matching, the ends are even. Good grief. <laughs> So then I'm going to stick it in there and I'm going to line that earl up with that center mark and I'm going to push down. I'm going to scoot this a little closer. So now I've got holes in there like that, right? Let me put my sheet back on there. So then I'm just going to follow my template here and I'm going to stop where my template stops. I don't want it to go too far. And I am pushing that little notch thing in back here to go through the hole so it keeps it even. I feel like when you're doing a lot um, of pages, that's important to do. All right, so then I'm gonna flip it around like this, restack it up, and then I'm going to line up the holes again. And just a couple more. Punch that through the hole, secure it. All right, so there's those two. And then the cover's different because it's longer. So all I do with the cover, I suppose I, that's the way it's gonna go, <laughs> is I just lay this template on top. I know it's hard to see because it's white. And I just kind of eyeball it from side to side. It's a little over an eighth of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch on each side. And then, same thing. I just stick it in there, punch. You know what I forgot to do? I have a paper trimmer out. Forgot to trim out my mat. Okay, I'll get to it in a second. I am so excited that I'm finally getting to film. I know you guys aren't going to see this right away, but I'm just beside myself excited. This one's going to be so fun. Whoops. Alright, I lost track of what I was doing here. It's not usually that hard to do, but since I can't get over top of it, um, it just makes it a little more difficult. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside. So let me grab the rest of them here. So this is my back cover, so I'm gonna stick that on the back like that. And then this is, oops, part one, option A, page two, three, and then I'm gonna go back here, and this is gonna go back here on my back cover. See what I mean about my printer printing off funky? I don't know if you can see it that well, but anyway. Okay, so we're almost ready to bind. So I've got everything laminated. I've got um, everything punched, right? So the next thing you wanna do is any templates, <clears throat> like for example, this one, obviously, I'm going to cut this out and I'm gonna attach it on here. But some of these templates, like, let me find, and I don't know if I've done this yet in a video. Like I said, this is my first video for this particular printable, like this template for example, this one can be a small flip page as well, but you need two of them, right? So instead of printing off the whole page, um, just print another one off, and I didn't throw away those other pieces, they're in here, right there, so they're there, so I, in case I need them, um, print another one off and cut it off, so you've got both the mat and you've got the base of it, so if you, when you need another page to make a flip page, you just get this out and trace around that and leave, you know, a little bit of room over here to be your tab, you know, to, to attach onto whatever page. So some pages I did that. So I just print those off onto 110 pound cardstock um, that I get at um, Staples or Amazon. Uh, I will search it up and, and link it below. I will also link my printer up because I get asked about, I just got asked about that today, matter of fact. Um, but anyway, so I do that for not all, and you can also do that as you go. You don't have to pre-do that, nor do you have to pre-put these 
these um, all these mats in here. You can wait if you want to and just do them as you need them. Um, but I like to do it this way because I like it all to be finished, right? Plus, I don't want to bind it until I have all this stuff in there for the most part. So let me go ahead and get my paper trimmer out so I can put this mat on here. And I'm keeping all these pieces. I'm not going to put tabs on it just yet, you know, like page tabs. I thought about it, but um, I'm not sure I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to wait. So if you happen to see in videos before this, before this one goes public, if you happen to see me with tabs in my workbook, then I will explain it then. <laughs> Um, but as of right now, I don't think I'm going to. Okay. Let's see here. One more cut. And when you're cutting, when you're cutting the mat templates, you do need to be careful, um, especially when you're fussy cutting around the special areas and whatnot. You do need to trim it out really good because this is the one you're going to be tracing around um, if you don't print it directly onto your pattern paper. Okay, so let me get the page. To attach this down, I get asked this question quite a bit as well. You don't want it to be stuck permanently. You, you want it to be able to come up and down. One clue I can give you is use good cardstock. Don't use the flimsy stuff. Um, it will tear almost every time. Um, I'm just going to use my ATG gun. Um, somebody made that for me, isn't it pretty? Um, it's just the Scotch Advanced Tape Platter. Um, but inside, I don't have the actual Scotch tape in here. What I do have is tape that I order from the Tape Depot. I did have, I used to have a, a post-it that I had somewhere. I don't know what I did with it, but I, it's tapedepot.com, pretty sure, right? And so you can get the specific tape for the ATG guns, and um, it'll ask you when you order it. I will try to find the link um, below and I'll post it below I mean but it also asks you when you order it if you need an adapt if you need the one that is adapted for these um, ATG guns okay so there's a, it's a different centerpiece um, the other ones will work but it's just a pain in the tushy so the reason I bring that up is because this isn't as strong as the scotch ATG tape is so um, that might be another thing so maybe the cheaper the tape that you use, the better this will be. Does that make sense? I hope it's making sense. <laughs> okay, so what I do is I just do a little strip. I don't know, can you see? I just do one little strip down the middle and I try to make it to where it's where I'm gonna be peeling it back so it's not going this way, you see what I'm saying? So then I take it and put it on my arm and just rub it a little bit, pull it off, and then it should be good to go, right? So there's the mat for that, right? So it should be able to remove nicely, okay? Now, even with this really good tape, if you don't de- or this really good, <laughs> even with this cheaper tape that's not as sticky, if you don't de-stick it a little bit, it's gonna stick to the um, plastic, okay? To the sheet, whether it's a sheet protector or if you laminate it like I did here, um, you know, it's, it's going to stick unless you de-stick it just a little bit. All right. So now what? Now I need to find, I didn't get, I didn't grab my binder rings. Um, my binder rings, my coil thingy. What are these called? Oh, shoot. I can't remember. I'll have to go get the box. But what I'm going to do is the reason I like to go ahead and do all the mats in there because that'll give me my thickness okay so you can see there how thick it is right so i'm just going to measure it i'm going to try to measure it without getting over top of it it's under an inch it looks like let me measure it with it laying flat versus and you want to measure it like at the thicker part not the thinner part so it looks like it's thinner down here at the bottom so i'm going to measure it up here and it looks like maybe an inch and if I put a little pressure on it it could be three fourths so let me go see what coil they're not coils let me go get it and then I'll tell you what they're called <laughs> and I'll be right back 
Okay, I found them. They are called uh, binding wire. <laughs> um, so I brought you the box. These are from Zutter, the same people that make the bind it all. Um, but the only color I have in the one inch is brass, which kind of stinkies. But that's okay. I'm not going to stress over it. I really want it black or uh, antique silver would even be like I had enough of the black for this is the three fourths inch. I had enough to do this one, but I'm just going to have to go with this. So I've got me one. I'm going to move this box out of the way and I'm going to need some wire cutters. So these are just some wire cutters. I don't know. I don't even remember what brand they are or where I got them. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to count my holes here. I'll move that. No, can't see. There we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. All right, 22 holes, and there are 22 of these majiggies. So I'm just going to cut two off because I already know. All right? So I actually keep these because when I did these, I had two 10 inch pieces, and then I have a a two inch piece in the middle so hey if you keep these little things you never know you might need them all right so let's do this all right i've got it upside down do i not okay so i think one of the rules of thumb when you're doing the bind it all is you take the back cover and you flip it around onto the front so let's do that first oh the only thing about this is since the pages are a little bit different than the I may have to feed it a little different. We'll see. So I'm going to take this off here. Yep, these are seven down. All right, and then I'm just going to um, put these in the holes here. Sometimes this goes so fast and easy, and sometimes you really struggle and fight with it. So let's hope that we do the fast and easy version. And before I squinch it down, look, that one doesn't want to go in. Before I squinch it, I will check to make sure all the pages fit in there, or got, um, caught. Oh, shoot. Okay. Get in there. That's one thing when you're dealing with plastic sleeves or these, like, really? <laughs> these laminating pouches? They're slippery. Oh, my. Well, let's start over. Jeez. And I'm sure y'all are probably yelling at me through the computer going, or through the screen that you're watching me on. You're doing it wrong. I think I do it different every time. I really don't think it's the wrong way to do it. An easier way to feed them through there, but all right, so now I'm gonna flip it this way. Yeah, see, I missed a few more than a few, it looks like it's not supposed to be this far, though, so I promise. There we go. So then let's just start adding a few on a time. It's probably what I should have done to begin with, but hard head over here. Okay, so before I clamp this down, let me make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Okay, everything's where it's supposed to be. So what I like to do, this is how I like to do it. Everybody has their way of doing it. So you do how you do it. But this is how I like to do it. So there's these markings in here um, for the sizes of the wires that you're using. So I'm using a one inch wire. So I'm actually going to start at the one inch wire mark like that. And then I'm gonna sit my wire is in here and I'm going to sit it in there to where it's six at a time or five at a time. One, two, three, four, six at a time. And I'm going to butt the, uh, make sure it's flat down there. I know you can't see. Um, make sure everything's touching the bottom. But I'm going to move the skinny wire towards the fat wire. Okay. So I'm going to try to keep my book out of the way and I'm going to have to scoot a little closer. And I'm going to try not to push down too hard. And then I'm just going to do a gentle squeeze. Just like that. Right? So now we got it. It looks like this. Okay? It's not closed all the way, but I'm going to go all the way down and do that same thing until all the wires are in the same position. It's kind of awkward when you can't get 
over top of it, I have to say. Okay. Whoops, that one didn't close the same. Let's do five. Probably because it was shifted a little bit. Okay, so now we got something that looks like that. It's not closed. See, there's a gap still. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it one, two, three. Three times. I didn't even look to see where it landed. Um, this is just what's been working for me. So same thing. I'm going to stick it in there. The first six loops. I'm going to gently squeeze it again. And it's almost there. Oh, you can't see. <laughs> literally maybe an eighth of an inch left. So I'm going to go down through and I'm going to do all of them the same way. And if you don't have these tools, um, again, you can always take them to Staples or Office Depot or any place that, you know, <laughs> handles paper in any way, shape, or form. Um, all right, so I'm going to do one more twist around on my dial there. I'm going to sit it in there and I'm going to see if that's what it needs. Just one more. Um, it's close. I'm going to do, I'm going to do one more. Oops, wrong way. <laughs> one more twist. So that would be two twists. Okay, let's see here. There we go, perfect. So it might seem a little tedious to do it this many times when the instructions tell you to do it different, but I'll tell you what, when I do it just like the instructions tell me to, it never works out exactly the way I want it to. So, I like my method better. <laughs> this one got a little carried away, so I'm just gonna pull on it just a little bit. The ones on the end did a little bit, but that's okay. Right? So now we got it all closed up. So now I'm going to take the back page. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to put it at the back. So look. Now our book is all put together. Look at there. See how nice that is? I love it. Let's see, here's where the mini starts. Right? So just as simple as that. I'm not going to put a closure on it um, unless it gets thick. You know, that can always be added later. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to put any tabs on the side right now because the way I cut the pages, you know, the dividers for this is the everlasting and then back here is the mini. You know, the, these pages stick out further. So I'm thinking that'll be an easy way to, you know, find what I'm looking for. Okay, so it's all done. It's ready to be put to good use. Um, I'm super excited and I can't wait to start making my everlasting albums. Yay! Okay, so don't forget, I will link everything in the description box below. I will link um, all the videos I mentioned. I will link all the printables that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Um, I will link any product that I used. Did I already say that? <laughs> I will link these printables if you are interested. Um, and let me know in the comments below what you think. Let me know which workbook you like the best, which style, which thing, which one do you think is the easiest to work with? Since I haven't worked with this one yet, I, I just I can't tell you that exactly because this is different from the others a little. So, but I have a feeling it seems like it's going to be a lot cleaner and neater. So, we'll see. I haven't cut out all of my templates yet. Um, I have a feeling. Um, all of these will be cut out before I start working, um, you know, and showing you how to make the album. But um, you already have seen that by now. Okay, so give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Um, and be sure to check out these other uh, videos that are on the screen. It might be things you might want to see. And I guess I'll see you next time. Bye.